We've uh, had many conversations uh, over the past year uh, about this, Andy, but uh, it does feel like we are uh, now at an inflection point. And, and the real question I have more than anything else is about the, uh, uh, really about the public perception of Huawei and what you think Huawei needs to do, not necessarily what the U.S. government needs to do, but what Huawei needs to do to change that if it is to actually do business, not just here in the United States, but to, to change the perception in the West? Well, I think it's, I think it's two things. Uh, we've seen uh, some greater attention on one of those things, which is the impact of this campaign to carpet bomb Huawei out of existence, the impact on America. Uh, I saw a tech leader on Tuesday talked about Huawei derangement syndrome, uh, accusing the, uh, the Trump administration of blocking exports, basically hurting American companies. Over 300, nearly 300 American companies want to sell to Huawei. We're talking 40,000 jobs. You talk about, a, in the United States, you talk about a lot of jobs on this program on CNBC generally. But the fact is, I don't know of numbers that large that are impacted. And there's no national security reason. This blocking on the ability of us to export this technology that's already clear in national security review but, but Andy, is crazy. Part, so what we need to do at the yeah. Huawei is we need to have a transparency initiative. And right. that's what we need to have the carriers and the operators to call on the equipment suppliers like Huawei, Nokia, Ericsson, for each of us, because it's a shared responsibility in cyberspace. Invite us in to the experts. Let's talk about what it is we do to provide assurance for supply chain risk, integrated product development, uh, and in fact, our software engineering processes. Let's get the experts to hear this truth, the facts. Let's talk about right. where we are and where we need to go. But Andy, the conundrum isn't it ultimately that as long as this is a Chinese company that is seen as an arm of the government, and I know you don't believe that it is an arm of the government, but so long as China is China, um, it seems to me that there's always going to be a skepticism and a worry, if not a cynicism, that if the government were to want to use uh, Huawei in untoward ways, that they could. And as a number of U.S. government officials said in the last year, it's not really about the company, it's about the country. So China is the issue. But as we've said, we can put in place the kinds of measures that the United Kingdom has decided on, that Germany and the EU and France are deciding on. We can put in place measures where we can prove we're not subject to any undue influence of the China government now or in the future. And that has so to do so with... So just so we understand, what is, what is it exactly that you did in the case of the UK? Well, the UK has government monitored uh, evaluation of our products uh, and... The U.K. for a long time, and more recently in the decision that was announced, they are concerned about the role of the telecom and mobile operators because they run the networks. So they control the equipment and the access. So they require, and they've identified the critical nodes in the U.K. They've identified and required diversity of suppliers for each node. They put limits on market share. In fact, they've said that if, the, if Huawei is not allowed to participate in the U.K., the U.K., communication networks will be less secure. So we can put in place measures to prove we're not accessing data. We can't send data to China that we don't have access to, regardless of what the Chinese government may order us to do.